Everybody's here. Come on in. Yeah. All right. Oh my gosh, you guys there with all the old This is a bird that flew into this window yesterday sometime. And I didn't notice this until late last night when it was dark and all I could see was a foggy little image right here. And, and then this morning, here is the whole bird, arms spread out. Here's the wing here and the wing here, the foot underneath like this, the head with the, uh, they look like eyes, but these can't possibly be the eyes but he's crashing into the window and leaving the impression like the Shroud of Turin. I mean, it's amazing. It's just incredible. It's art. It's, it's an image that I don't ever want to go away, and it's got this sort of tragic aspects to it. Well, I mean, so you, you know, whatever is happening is, is being recorded directly from the mic pickup on that that you were talking about. Right <laughs> Nobody's listening. Uh, art is almost anything. Uh, like the Dadas, uh, they, they considered anything and everything art. And so... Uh, when you have that sort of sensitivity about art, then you um, you just become extremely sensitive to anything as representing art, and you start looking at life as art and everything in it as art. I, I got uh, um, trained, educated as an architect, and architecture and the business of architecture is all about being very precise. No mistakes were tolerated. I mean, you just had to try to achieve this level of, uh, of perfection in your work. After a period of time, you begin to recognize there is no such thing as perfection. And, and the effort towards perfection is just agonizing and very difficult. <laughs> yeah. See these, see the fruit in this tree? I would go around to every neighbor's house that had a fruit tree, cherries, apples, pears, plums, peaches, whatever the hell it was. I would crawl up into the tree. I would just make myself invisible up there. People would be walking around, didn't even know I was up there. I would eat until I almost would fall out of the tree. And I did that consistently all over the neighborhood. I just fed myself in the neighborhood out of people's uh, fruit trees. From the time that I can remember anything as a small uh, boy with my brother, who we were very close, we'd be in the car with my parents and, and my nose would be on the window looking at everything and just being absolutely enamored and amazed at everything that I was seeing. And it seemed like that was the way it was my whole life and, and even as a small child. I, I somehow was absolutely... Uh, had a huge amount of curiosity and, and fascination with the world and with textures and elements of what was happening around me. Oh, look at this. This piece of concrete on this wire. How weird. I had a major show in Chicago at, at the Phyllis Kine Gallery, and I was wonderfully uh, 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 received there. And I was my exhibit included Mies van der Rohe's drawings and then my rectilinear paintings. And it was part of the National Architects uh, Convention uh, 
the AIA, uh, American Institute of Architects Convention. Well, anyway, I went to there and I was excited and I was being sort of um, wined and dined and I, they, I, I said, I've got to go to the Chicago Art Museum because uh, Frank Stella's works there. And he was a hard-edged painter at the time and had national prominence and I, I couldn't wait to get there and I ran through the building. I knew where this uh, major piece of his was hanging when I got there. It was also rectilinear and hard edge like my work. The difference was his beard was in it. His lunch was in it. I mean, there was, there was spilled paint, drips, uh, all kinds of stuff. I mean, it was, it was just absurd. I thought, why am I killing myself creating perf perfect taped uh, rectilinear paintings when this great artist, uh, Frank Stella, doesn't seem to give a damn about that? And it was, it was just like... I got back to Seattle and I said, oh my gosh, I got to loosen up. And so I, I, I walked away from about seven major commissions of that style of my work. And then I, I put my brush down and didn't paint for a number of years. And then I started doing freer um, uh, paintings and started pushing paint around. And, and instead of uh, being so concerned about uh, the little details. And I can go to bed and I can say to my brain, Okay, let's dream about art. And so I do exactly that. It, it lasts my, my entire sleep period where I can control my thoughts and allow my mind to create art uh, freely in, in, in a dream sequence. There's a discipline to what I do that's sort of uniform, <laughs> whether it's cooking or whether it's, it's painting. Everything seems to have to have a certain look about it. Now look at this color. It's just, and I haven't even got it mixed up, but you can see the yellow and the green and the, and the red and... Random... Uh, matter unorganized, floating debris. It's like the galaxy, it's like space, it's the universe. Planets and the solar systems out in space floating about in this eternal area that we can't even define in terms of its scope and length and breadth. I love that sort of random placement of paint and now I'm using paint chips to create these these uh, these images and I, I just love the salvaging aspects and recycling of the paint that's kind of a fun aspect to all this I'm out of my head <laughs> happened to execute abstract so-called modern or contemporary art because that's my personal preference. And uh, although I have done uh, more realistic art in the past, but it's not, it's not where my passion is. I want to be executing paintings that are abstract, that represent nothing else but color and form and texture and pattern. And uh, they are not trying to represent anything. I love this piece because of its underlying geometric texture. There's a, there's, there are squares um, underneath this whole canvas that are subtly red through the surface of this paint. And what happens is that many times as you execute paintings uh, in the abstract is that it's, it's sort of what happens, it becomes a happy accident. Things occur which uh, either please you or displease you in, in the execution and the process of painting. That's the interesting thing about abstract work. There is no up and down necessarily. 
at the end of the day, you might hang it in a different position than where you started. I mean, it's, it's, it's a performance, it's a, it's a ballet. It's uh, the motion, the slow ebbing and flowing of this goo. Uh, it's convection, it's called convection. It's heated from the bottom, it rises up, it cools as it reaches the top, and then it flows back down, gets reheated and flows back up. And the randomness of that, it is ever-changing. It's never the same. It's unpredictable. The, the collisions of the ascending and descending goo create all kinds of um, patterns in, the, in, that, in that collision. And, and it just is fascinating, absolutely mesmerizing. I'm not an old hippie. I mean, I missed all of the free love and the, uh, the drugs and the, and the, you know, the craziness of, of that era. I was already grown up and wearing a suit and carrying a briefcase and had a family. I mean, it was like, and I'm watching them on the streets, you know, parading and demonstrating and wondering what's that all about. Turn on some music. Huh. <laughs> yeah! Oh, Maybelline. The uh, electric chess set that I designed in 1970, and uh, I've got a little publicity. In fact, a friend of mine is an Indian architect, uh, was taking photographs of this, very cool photos for me, and, and uh, we were all excited about it. And then it, it got published in Domus, uh, an Italian international design magazine. And we were all thrilled about that. Well, anyway, he's in, he goes on vacation, he's in Calcutta. And he's sitting in a restaurant in Calcutta with the uh, local Calcutta newspaper and, and his family is around with him and he's opening up the newspaper and boom, there's a picture of me in the electric chess set <laughs> in the Calcutta paper that he had just uh, helped me take pictures of. I don't know uh, what it is, but I have been sort of gifted with, uh, I think it's a gift, frankly. I feel good about the fact that I have all these strange ideas and and they come to me at different times and it's there's no way to perpetuate it, you know. Um, um, eating french fries doesn't make it happen. I mean, I don't know what it does, you know, it just shows up. but. Um, but I've had a lot of incredible ideas, so I've kept sketchbooks and written and sketched these things down over the, over a period of time, and it's just a it's just a, a neat thing that happens. Quite a span of time from this happy kid in the fourth grade to this uh, uh, sort of relieved 28-year-old, uh, um, and uh, the figure here in the middle, uh, quite a lifetime of uh, interesting and, and wonderful experiences. And here we are out in this beautiful, amazing place in the middle of this silence in this wheat field, and behind us is this great old uh, river rock or stone, floodstone uh, structure or homestead, which is just, how beautiful can it get with the sun setting over the hills? And it's just wonderful to be out here.